the Joe Rogan experience. They brought him in. The White House brought him in to talk about the pandemic, apparently. What? And this is general yeah. information. They said they're asking about crypto. <laughs> if you yeah. can fucking ask someone about the pandemic, would it be that guy on the right? <laughs> I mean, I would love to see a conversation between oh the guy on the left, yes. Biden, yeah. and the guy on the right. The guy on the left is making up words. The, the guy on the right is on amphetamines. Come on, man. Come on, man. Press just, Secretary just, Jean, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre conceded that four meetings may have also covered general information about crypto. B between senior Biden officials were about the pandemic. Like, what Yeah. What could that fucking young kid doing speed fucking his neighbors? Well, look, that, here's the thing. A, nobody in the White House really understands crypto to begin with, right? It's It's... It seems like very few people understand crypto, well, really. But but it, just in terms of looking at, at this guy's situation, um, it's like with Bernie Madoff. If you had gone and if someone had taken the time early days with Madoff, said, I'm going to go visit you know, some basics. I'm going to go look where his accountant sits. Oh, really? He's sitting in a fucking small office in a strip mall? And yet this guy's supposed to be you know, king of the world at this well, point? Well, how about these guys? Yeah. You know what they were using? QuickBooks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were using yeah. QuickBooks, the shit that, like, a guy uses if he has a fucking small bookstore. Yeah. They were so, using that. You just, I mean, you compile information, and, and maybe uh, one or two pieces of it, like, okay, you look at the guy and you go, this guy doesn't look like a, a, a rocket scientist, and, and you know, he, his lifestyle, you look at lifestyle issues, maybe they're bizarre, but you compile as much information about uh, the entire apparatus as possible, and I would argue that anybody in their right mind, if they had taken the time to do significant due diligence, would have stepped back and said, oh, no, not doing this guy. You know, I don't care how many celebrities he's got put in there. And... You know, and he, he was going after celebrities for a reason, just like your name over an arena, or your, your right. you know, because it gives you fucking credibility. The same reason why right. he's donating so much money. Yes, and and you know the donations. Anybody who thinks he wasn't doing that to exert leverage uh, or to gather information, you know, uh, again, naive, ignorant, you know, whatever. Well, but, his mother was a big time Democratic operative too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that was probably part of his connection. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a shame because, you know, uh, a lot of people were hurt, you know, whether they claw that money back or not. Millions you know. of people. Yeah, and, you know, some of the some of the folks in the Democratic Party are saying, well, we're going to give some money back, but... How? It's going to be, yeah, exactly. Where's the money? Yeah. Where, where's it coming from? If it, yeah. if the money's all nonsense, which is what a lot of crypto is, it once it collapses, it's nonsense. There's no legitimate assets, right? Right, and then you have to also ask yourself, and I think... You know, some of the uh, there's some coverage. I think there's going to be more talking about the nature of trading. Again, you you know, wash trades are illegal in the financial industry for a reason, right? But explain if got, wash trades again. Uh, it's um, what's the way to? It's like okay, it's like with my my book. You know, you might have heard about my book. Company I heard Rules. about it. Yeah, it's being released on the 18th of January on Script. Uh, How does this have to do with anything? Or you just, just I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. If I if I really was desperate and I said I really want my book to become a bestseller, mm -hmm. right? well, one of the things I could do is I could set up I could set up a bunch of fake uh, accounts uh -huh. on Amazon or wherever, and then I could put money into those all those different accounts, and then I could start buying up my book. I know right? someone who did that. You did. Yeah. That's that's a it's in a sense that's a wash trade. Is that illegal? Right? You're on both sides, right? Uh, it's illegal in the financial industry, but see, remember, crypto is what is it? It's, it's not a currency. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a piece of property. It's a, you know. So it's they haven't decided. They're still trying to figure it out, right? Which again, I would argue is one of the reasons why you know SBF was putting money into politics. You know, if you can get ahead of the game, I'll tell you as an example. As you know, there, there's a reason why I'm telling the story. Early days of, of Iraq, I'm talking like 2003, 2004, 2005, um, my company had you know, a lot of people there because we were supporting security operations for a lot of the infrastructure companies. You know? And so they're out there trying to rebuild parts of the country. They're doing things. Well, they've got to have security, and they've got to have people handling a, a variety of problems for them. So we had gotten out there very early. We were out there in early 2003, right, at the very beginning. And... Uh, it didn't take long. It, it, you know, at first there were several months where it was relatively peaceful. Shit started to hit the fan out there in about September of 2003. Right, really started going south, and then it started getting violent. And there's a, so 2004, 2005, the security business in Iraq just ballooned. 
right? Suddenly you couldn't swing at that cat without hitting another security company. They just popped up out of nowhere. You know, you'd, you'd be out there and you'd say, well, who are you guys with? And they'd say some company you'd never heard of, right? And just put together because people saw opportunity. I'm going to get some government contracts, right? I'm going I'm to work mm-hmm. for these companies. I'm going to do this. And they were pulling people who had no business being out in a hostile environment, right? And, and providing security. Um, so then they started having problems. There were all sorts of issues. Well, we started thinking, okay, this has got to get regulated, right? State Department and, and Pentagon, they're going to come in and they're going to so, say, no, we've got to regulate the private security industry that's operating out here. We know we need it, but it's just unregulated. So we're, we're going to do it. So as part of that, once we realized that was going to happen, we got together with some of the more reputable security firms that were operating out there. We said, let's form an association right, so that we can get ahead of the curve. Right? And we can help define what the regulations are for these security companies that are out there operating. It's in our best interest. Right? Mm-hmm. And I would argue it's no different than what you know, SBF was doing, you know, kind of spreading the cash around so that he could understand where the regulations were going to come from and he could get ahead of the curve. And, and you know, so, hey, from an Intel perspective, you know, bravo. That's the right intuition. But, uh, again. But he didn't you know, recognize his vulnerability. Didn't recognize.